So this is the first time I do a YouTube video where I actually speak, so I do hope my accent is not too strong and I'm not losing the thread of what I want to say. Um, I wanted to show the process for this illustration because uh, it's the first time I use um, the iPad Pro and Procreate to do a relatively complex illustration and I set myself the goal to do it entirely uh, with Procreate. Um, this illustration was done for one of the monthly heart challenges of the SVS Learn um, Society and actually Will Terry, who is one of the founders of the SVS Learn, is, um, is the one person who convinced me to buy an iPad Pro rather than a Cintiq Companion or a Surface and he actually has some nice tutorial on Procreate and he shows there the interface and all the commands and I actually looked at all those tutorials before attempting um, this piece in Procreate, so I, I highly recommend them. Um, this video is, is just a recording of the drawing and painting within Procreate, so you can't see the interface here, and I'm not going to describe how the app works. Uh, Will Terry did that extensively. Uh, what I will discuss are some of the differences between Procreate and Photoshop uh, with regard to drawing and painting. Um, I've been using Photoshop for many years, and it is really interesting to work in an app that it's a minimalistic version of Photoshop for artists and that has some limitations compared to Photoshop but also has some very interesting features that Photoshop does not have. Um, some of the limitations that, that I think one has to be aware uh, but that are actually um, quite acceptable is first and foremost that it's not possible to crop um, the image so once you set the canvas size it stays that way. Uh, this means you have to pick the image size with some thought or you will have to leave Procreate to crop the image and then come back uh, with a different sized image. Uh, also there is a limitation to the number of layers depending on the size of the canvas but the numbers are still quite high so it's not a real problem. For this image for example which is about 5000 pixels wide uh, I could have a little more than 30 layers which is way more than what I normally use I, I merge layers also quite often and Procreate can handle this very well so it's um, not a problem with the number of layers. Right off the bat there are two functions in Procreate that are really unique to the software and are simply awesome. Uh, one is the one you're seeing right now, it's the fact that Procreate automatically records every stroke and can export this recording as a video. This is cool not only for making boring YouTube videos like this one but also because you can review the evolution of a piece. Uh, and this is really interesting. It lets you analyze your decisions in hindsight and see if, if you actually went the right way. The second thing, uh, which is absolutely fabulous, is the perspective tool. Uh, the Procreate Perspective Grid Editor is the perspective tool I've been looking for for years and never could find. It works exactly how perspective tool should work. Uh, I think you set up your three vanishing points and the horizon tilt and that's it. The canvas expands uh, for that step, so you can set your vanishing points as far away as you want. Uh, you can decide how visible the guides should be, and when you're happy with the setup, you get your canvas back to the size uh, with a perspective grid overlay. This is simply awesome. It's uh, The only thing that maybe is missing is the possibility to define the unit square size. But overall, this tool is so good that I would use Procreate for setting up a grid even if I then went on to work went on even if then I went on to work on a computer and Photoshop uh, for the illustration. The grid unfortunately does not get recorded so you you will not see it in this video um, but I add it on throughout the drawing phase uh, and then I actually created a second grid to plot the um, the point light shadows uh, for the painting phase. With regard to painting, uh, Procreate does not have the same flexibility and diversity of brushes that Photoshop has, but it has some really good standard brushes and since I do not use a lot of fancy brushes anyhow, this works very well for me. A whole new set of brushes has been included in the new release and all brushes are very customizable. Uh, for each brush you can also set how it will respond to pressure and tilt, which is pretty cool. Uh, the iPad Pro with Apple Pencil is very responsive in terms of speed and pressure sensitivity. I do not feel any major uh, drawback or difference compared to the Cintiq. 
painting works really well. Um, the fact that it's a touch interface makes many common actions very, very easy, uh, like picking colors or adjusting the brush size. Uh, palm rejection is pretty good, but it's not perfect, so you will have to be careful, uh, especially when the piece is, is far uh, advanced. Uh, you will create smudges that you will have to remove by painting over, which is quite annoying. Some things I really like um, all relate to the iPad touch and gesture interface. It's very comfortable to be able to zoom in and rotate uh, by pinching and rotating your fingers. And actually, most of this painting has been done uh, in zoomed sections and rotating the canvas so to be more comfortable when painting. Uh, color picking by touch is absolutely awesome. And also the fact that you can draw uh, straight lines by holding the end of your stroke is, is very useful, especially when you paint. Procreate allows to blend layers uh, with the same blending modes as Photoshop has, um, but not does not allow blending modes on brushes. This is a, a bit of a limitation because I very often use uh, multiply, overlay and dodge brushes. Uh, but uh, you know you can use layers instead, so it's it's a little bit of a workaround, but uh, but it's doable. There is one thing where Procreate really doesn't match uh, Photoshop at all, and this is the masking functions. Uh, if you work with a lot of masks and selections, Procreate does not offer a very effective workflow, and only actually pretty minimal options. Um, transformation, however, is very intuitive. Uh, it's also possible to move each end separately by holding it for a couple of seconds, and this is really useful. Uh, however, some transformations are not possible. For example, the warp transformation is not possible, and this is a, a little bit of a limitation when you use texture overlays. Um, you see I use a lot of overlay textures in my paintings, and um, and it, it's easy to bring overlay textures into Procreate, but you cannot adapt the textures to the curves of the objects because you can neither warp nor liquefy. Um, Procreate has adjustments. Um, it, has, it doesn't have levels, uh, which I use a lot in Photoshop, but it does have curves, which is very similar. Uh, it also has some uh, selection of effects, for example, the blur effect, uh, let's say some of the most used effects uh, in Photoshop. So the essential needs are are covered, but not definitely not the advanced needs. Uh, one thing to consider is that Procreate does not seem to be super stable. Uh, this was a pretty large file. It ended up at 17 megabyte, uh, and it had about 10 layers towards the end. Uh, and Procreate um, closed without warning several times, um, every couple of hours or so. On a couple of occasions, I even had an iPad crash, and I had to restart the whole um, the whole iPad. Um, the app obviously saves every single stroke, so you do not lose anything. So you're up and running again within half a minute. Uh, but I, I think there are some jumps in the video, so maybe that was uh, compromised. Uh, so in summary, given the portability and convenience of the iPad, Procreate is really a high value solution for painting and drawing on the move. Uh, and even as an alternative to a Cintiq and computer workstation. I am very enthusiastic about it and, and its possibilities. Um, I don't think it would substitute my standard workstation, workstation but definitely is a full value solution uh, for, for mobility. So it makes it really possible to work even on a complex illustration uh, if, when you have, for example, some downtime, downtime or you're around and you're, you cannot sit in the studio, uh, but you still can do some, some work. That's it. Um, I hope you have uh, enjoyed this, this short video and there was something useful in terms of information. Um, uh, enjoy creating.